Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today I have my three sisters with me, not Trinity, but my sisters in Christ. We have Ashley Sanchez, Hi. Carissa Garcia, Hi. Yeah, and Christina Dabdu. All right, so last week we talked about how you can be a missionary in your hometown, and now today we are sharing our favorite stories of missionaries and i guess just stories of people even being persecuted for christ a lot of them come from the fox um book of the martyr or voice of the martyr dc talk you've probably heard different things like that but we are going to interview todd nettleton soon so his podcast will be up and he is the host of the voice of the martyr podcast i think okay and we are really excited for this one because we've all been inspired by different stories just growing up hearing some as a kid um having our favorite i already know that chris's favorite is elizabeth (laughs) elliott so we'll give her that one and i think we'll start with carissa if you want (laughs) her eyes got really big (laughs) and she doesn't know anything about elizabeth elliott but my question (laughs) for carissa is why is elizabeth elliott so inspiring to you Mm. what is it that helped like in her life that helps you and why do you think it's important to have different people who are radical that you kind of look up to or i guess Mm -hmm. research okay i'll go first um i would say so i've actually i feel like i first heard of elizabeth elliott um when i was in bible college and it was funny because there was a girl that was talking about her and i was like oh like who is she and so that was probably around the time that i started getting into um like learning more about missionaries and and now like where my favorite thing is to like read missionary autobiographies um but i started to like look into her and and then someone had actually left me the book passion and purity Mm -hmm. which is jim and elizabeth's story and so i read it and the lord really ministered to me at that time through the book but it was more of like obviously like their story and and them as a couple but Then over time, I listened to another, I think it was like a podcast and it was about the life of Elizabeth. And so then I just started to like read her books, like, um, let me be a woman, passion and purity through the gates of splendor, like just so much, she has so many. And I just started to read them and I was like, this woman is fascinating, Mm -hmm. but really why she has always, I think been my favorite and why I've just, have always like looked up to her is because she was so faithful in her like college years, like to the Lord and serving the Lord. And, um, she also, I feel is like, is, was always like the, I don't like the, the poster woman for like, like serving the Lord in your singleness, but also she had such a desire for marriage and to have a family, but she was like, I want to do what the Lord's called me to do. Mm. And like, should the Lord bring me, you know, a husband to, to do that with, and I'll walk in it, but Mm. I'm not, it was kind of like, well, I'm not changing my lane for anybody. Like Mm. I feel called to this region. I feel called to this ministry. And so, um, I really just have always looked up to her because she even says like she spent most of her time single than she was married because her, um, so hers, her and Jim's story is one of in passion and purity, but it's about how they both had different, um, I don't want to say different callings, but they were called, they're both called to be missionaries, but they had different places that they were called to. But Jim's thing was that he wrestled with, you know, is he called to marriage? Because he was like, I know I'm called to a very radical place and I don't know if it's, you know, wise for me to be married. And so that was their story. So it was five years of them serving the Lord in where the Lord called them, but them having that love for each other and knowing that the Lord 
was doing something, but it was a matter of waiting and trusting. So that's their really like grand story is of waiting and trusting the Lord. But in all that time, what I love is that Jim was so faithful to the Lord and Mm -hmm. Elizabeth was so faithful and that Mm -hmm. they just served the Lord and they just continued. And then it's like the Lord brought them together and then they served and the Lord brought them. And then finally, I'm not going to ruin it. You guys could read it. I recommend you read it um, if you're single or dating or married, mm-hmm. whatever. But um, and then, you know, obviously the Lord brought them together. And what Jim is known for in Elizabeth is that her husband was martyred yeah. along with four others. Yeah. And so her story was like, well, Lord, why would you have all of this and have us be married for only, I think, gosh, I think it was less than two years. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But they were married and then they, you know, she um, had a child, but it was like, that always gets me too that they were more they had longer wait than they were together but it was her story after is what really um, impacted me was that the lord had placed it on her heart that she was supposed to return to the tribe um which they were ministering to the alka indians and so and it's such a picture of forgiveness um So she goes back and, you know, there's even Christians and other people Mm -hmm. telling her, like, this is not wise. Like, is this even the Lord? Like, you're going back to the tribe that murdered your husband and the other missionaries. And so she goes back and she, you know, is like, I don't know what can happen. Like, they can murder me like they did my husband and they can murder my child. But they go, you know, and it was her just forgiving the tribe leader or the chief, whoever, for murdering her husband and the others. That is what caused the whole entire village to end up coming to the Lord. And that was like the opening door of like discipleship and like Bible studies and like raising up people to, to, you know, like start serving and things like that. But that story always like, oh my gosh, it just always ministers to me of just the fact that she was willing to look into the face of mm. the people, the the man who like murdered her husband. And it was, it was the one who, I think I was reading a story and it was the one who actually had the spear yeah. to her husband. Wow. And she went and she forgave him. Yep. But it was because of her forgiveness that he was like, like, oh my, like mm. this Jesus must be real. And that is what broke that hard heart of stone and gave yeah. him a heart of flesh and like came to the Lord and then the, then the rest of the tribe. And so then she ended up staying there, I think for, um, four or five years and was help translating and was discipling and, and being with the women and all these things. And then the Lord called her back to the States. And I always mm-hmm. think that's fascinating because she'll say as a child that she was called to be a missionary and she was called to Africa, you know, but then she ended up in South America And then that's where she went back again with that tribe. And then the Lord called her back to the States. And that always gets me is when missionaries are called back. So I'm like, how did the Lord, what, Mm -hmm. how did that happen? But God is still faithful and she Mm -hmm. still went out, but it wasn't, you know, where, where she thought, but he still used her Mm -hmm. and she came back to the States and then the Lord started to open doors for her here, you know, and then she would go and um, speak at like missionary conferences and things like that at different universities. And that's where she met her second husband who also ended up um, dying within three years of marriage. Hmm. He died of cancer. And yeah. same thing. She was wow. like, oh, my gosh, Lord, like, you keep giving me husbands and they keep dying. <laughs> and, you know, but still trusting the Lord, going to those uh, conferences, you know, um, speaking and, you know, all these things and encouraging other women and write, getting letters. She's like inundated with letters and she'll respond. And it's all about singleness and marriage and widow and and missions and all this stuff. And then she just continued in that. And then the Lord later on sent her her third husband, Lars, um, who I believe is still alive now. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that was her longest one, you know, Mm -hmm. but it was, I just, I, I'm fascinated because she went through like losing two husbands, like twice, like she was single and then she gets one and then loses it and then gets Mm -hmm. another one and then loses them again. I'm just like, you know, that's like crazy to think like, why would the Lord do that? But um, so she makes that joke too. If she's like, I thought I would never have one, but I got three, mm-hmm. you know, and so, but hers is just such a picture of her faithfulness, like in her, in her early college years. And even in that was like, no, the Lord's calling me here. And if God's going to bring us together, he's going to do it. And my gosh, read their story. You see how God brought them mm-hmm. together and mm-hmm. in the same place and that it was his timing and that she believed him, you know, was her husband. And it was but then so was someone else later, mm. you know? And so, um, she's just always inspired me. And one of my favorite quotes from her, and I 
I use it a lot, but it's um, in acceptance, life, peace. And I don't even know mm. if it's Elizabeth's. It could be actually Amy Carmichael's. I don't know, but she always quotes it um, in her, in a lot of her books and then in her podcast. But yeah, she's just been my favorite because I just feel the whole, um, just her season of waiting and, and relationships and then her serving the Lord in her singleness and being willing to go out single mm. or married. Mm. She was willing to do either and then just continue to serve the Lord and, and just her heart for women. That's just like, mm. I don't know. I just feel like I identify with so many things from her, but that's why she's my favorite. Yes. And yeah. you can also, if you don't like to read things, you can also watch the movie. I think it's the end of the spear and mm. the story of that. And um, was it Nate Saint was also a part yeah, of that? Nate Saint. It was like mm-hmm. the, but um and we'll link all these in the description below all the resources and and, oh the podcast Mm, so good that one's really good my dad is definitely obsessed with that podcast (laughs) and (laughs) elizabeth elliott and she's a passionate woman and that's the whole thing but um ashley or christy do you guys have any stories that you can think of that inspire you or you would like to share yeah so um my first introduction to the concept of martyrdom Mm -hmm. or suffering for the cause of Christ was actually John Bunyan. Mm. And he is one of my favorite authors. He wrote um, Pilgrim's Progress. And he Mm. also has his autobiography. I believe it is called Grace Abounding for the Chief of Sinners. And so um, John Bunyan, he was, I believe, born in in like the 1600s so like the 1620s um in england he grew up in like the puritan area um or puritan era i meant to say Mm -hmm. and uh so he didn't really grow up in church he was actually very foul-mouthed and Mm -hmm. really mean he would hang out with like this ragamuffin gang that they had Mm. in the puritan area i don't know about that life but (laughs) it always makes me laugh when i read about it i was like okay john i see you so um so one of the really cool things about john that i admire is kind of fast forward he started to have these nightmares in his teen years um while he's having these nightmares these nightmares are um about hell He is dreaming about hellfire. He's dreaming about being tormented Mm -hmm. and he's screaming and yelling and he doesn't know how to get himself out. But Mm -hmm. in this dream, he he's like asking, what is truth? Like, where do I go? Mm -hmm. Like, what do I do? And it's not until he had to join um, the war efforts and he's on the front lines watching Mm -hmm. people die around him. And that this was during the English Civil War where he he said the good and the bad Mm. all die together. Mm -hmm. And he said, but where do we go? Mm. You know, like, like Mm. what happens? And so at, when he left the military, he said, what is the best thing that I could do to get closer to God? And he was just like, Hmm, being a pastor. Mm -hmm. So (sighs) that was his go-to answer. He's like, how could I get closest to God? He said, be a pastor. Like my dad Mm. says, he's like, I'm a pastor because the Lord knows that's the only way I'll seek him because I I need to have a sermon every Sunday. So I need to. Well, it was amazing because for John, he did it because it was like the check mark Mm. on that box of like good works, pastor. Look Mm. at that. Preaching Mm. God's word. Ooh, done. Right. He didn't, he didn't really, he didn't have like that heart change, like that transformation. Mm. And it wasn't until um, he met these four women, he just came across them and he overheard them actually talking about the Bible. Mm -hmm. And the way that these women were talking about Jesus, he said it was like, he goes, people who talk about God, they like maybe the inside kind of changes, but the outside still remains the the same and the outward expression of the Jesus that they have, right? Isn't really showing, like they're not living and walking mm. in, in that salvation or living for Christ. So when he overheard these women talking about Jesus, he was so enamored. He mm. said, I want to know the Jesus that you guys know. Mm. He goes, that's the Jesus that I want. And so 
they 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 talked about Jesus like he mm. was their best friend. Amen. Like they have tea, breakfast, lunch, dinner. They have it all. <laughs> That's the the Jesus that they knew. Like they had this intimacy with Jesus that he longed for. And so through that, he he actually met the pastor of these women, mm. and he was the one who really kind of discipled him and led him to really know the Jesus that he later on would have to suffer for fast forward he ends up um in his own church they actually had a rule um stating that there was no um uh outside preaching so you couldn't preach outside of the of the puritan church yeah. and so he says but the bible calls me yeah, to preach totally. he goes the bible says that i need to preach and so um, he actually quoted, I believe it was that verse from like Romans where it says, how, like, how will anyone hear unless yep. someone is called? That is Romans 10, 15, Romans 10, 15. Thank you. And okay. so he actually quoted that. Um, and so it was really, it was really cool. And so he was just like, okay, well, I'm going to preach. So the court starts saying, well, he's not allowed to preach. So we're going to create like this. The de declaration, if he even says one word outside mm. of the, the church, arrest him on the spot. Mm -hmm. So he says, well, whatever happens, it happens. I'm going to preach. I'm going to go in there anyway. Because he said, how will I teach people how to be courageous yeah. in sharing mm -hmm. the gospel if they don't see their pastor exactly. being courageous? Mm -hmm. And so it was so powerful. So, of course, he goes to preach. He gets arrested. They they gave him a sentence of three months. Now, mind you, he has a blind daughter that he has to care for. He has a wife who later on passes on. Mm -hmm. He has he has responsibility abilities that he has and he can't be there for any of them because back then the men took care of mm -hmm. the home so it's also so amazing how the church during this time rallied around john's yep. family mm -hmm. and they became the providers for his wife and for his children mm -hmm. really really beautiful so the three months is over Good the the, the jailer sorry my eye the jailer um comes and says okay are you like you can be free but you cannot preach anymore like you have to stop he said and it's actually one of my favorite quotes from him and i don't even want to like butcher it mm -hmm. but he said if i was out of prison today i would preach the gospel again to tomorrow by the help of god mm. so god he told god. them behind bars he said keep me in here. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to preach God's mm -hmm. word. It's not going to matter. They actually kept him in for 12 years. Wow. Um, and mm -hmm. so in those 12 years, That's he wrote he Pilgrim's wrote. Progress. Yep. Yep. And so um, it's such a beautiful journey. And being introduced to Pilgrim's Progress is so where good. it really solidified yeah. my faith mm -hmm. because it's a fiction work of the walk of the believer, right? You go from the city of destruction mm -hmm. to the celestial c mm -hmm. city and you're finding your way and you're meeting these characters like pride and sloth and hate all uh hate all good and mm -hmm. or um just all of these characters mm -hmm. the devil the mm -hmm. dragon mm -hmm. all of these characters has Talk a Oracle. name of just like these sins or these issues that we may come across yeah. And so he he just wrote it so plainly, but it's so beautiful. One of the things that that what God did for him, I don't think I've ever read in any other missionary or pastor testimony is while he was jailed for those 12 years, mm. there was a really bad plague that was killing all of England and the nearby town. Mm. So he was released mm. to be free on the condition that he came back once the plague was over, whenever mm. that happened. But then even when he came back to jail, the jailer would allow him to go preach his sermon because the laws had changed, but they had not yet overturned his sentence. Mm. So the laws had changed and mm. they said, well, you can now go out and preach, but you can't leave this jail unless it's on a Sunday to go mm. preach. No. And so like, his obedience opened the door for favor and witnessing to the other inmates, witnessing to the jailer, mm -hmm. 
Yep. Like that's a whole story mm-hmm. in, in his book as well. Amazing, amazing story. And that was really like my first introduction to yeah. someone who was suffering for Christ. Mm-hmm. And he he had an amazing book out of it. I would recommend yes. it. Pilgrim's Progress. It's one of my favorite Everyone books. Go get it. So definitely go mm-hmm. get it. So amazing. And here's a picture of John Bunyan. Wow. He has a mustache. That one side is up and one side is slicked down. You know it's serious. He you know is it's serious. Look at that. Trend. Won't won't God do it? Back in the He's like, I'm gonna bless you with this really I'm nice bless mustache. You with this mustache. <laughs> oh man, that's it's good. Anointed. All right, Christy. <laughs> what are some stories or things that have inspired you? Okay, so I found this story. Well, actually, before telling this story, something I have a quote from from Amy Carmichael. Mm. Um, I don't know too much about her, but she was living in India, right? And she mm-hmm. laid down her life yep. um, to to help uh, these girls who were, yeah. they were what? I think they were being prostituted. prostituted. Yeah, they were being prostituted. Yeah. yeah, it's really heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, and she had her own desires. She wanted to like have a family mm-hmm. and... But God led her to that. And so she was obedient and her favorite, or she quotes... Her favorite quote is, or maybe it's, sorry, you're going to have to edit this. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, Her motto was missionary life is simply a chance to die. Mm -hmm. Mm. So yeah, she believed that the only way to serve God was to truly like lay down your life, like your own desires, your ambitions Mm -hmm. and to live for him. Amen. So that's that's really inspiring. And so the story that I brought is um, written by Sabrina Warmbrand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So she was living in communist Romania. Mm -hmm. And her husband, Richard, was a pastor. And I believe they had the opportunity to flee because Christians were persecuted. Mm -hmm. But they were like, we can't leave. Like, Mm -hmm. they loved the communist the russian communists so much that they were like we're gonna stay here and we're gonna preach the gospel so they were both um incarcerated and i think this is where she um she got this story because she she's the one that wrote it and it's about five christian women who who were imprisoned Mm. and they were like witnessing to the not only the woman in the prison, but also to the guards and mm. the guards would come to them like in secret, like, please pray for like my wife, mm. um, but don't no, like, don't tell anyone. And um, so these women were really suffering. It was cold. Um, and they kept being asked to stop witnessing, to stop sharing their faith. But of course they didn't stop. And so there was one day that the director of the prison made them, um, go into the ice barefoot with barely any clothes and they told them like if you if you promise to stop speaking about god um we'll like we'll let you you know we'll let you get off the ice and um so they they didn't and they um they didn't and they started to worship the lord Mm. all together and then um so the director, of course, got more angry and he was like, I'm going to re- we're going to release these dogs. I imagine they were like these scary mm-hmm. dogs that would kill anyone. And so they they all started to pray on their knees. And so when they released these dogs, mm-hmm. they literally just stopped mm-hmm. um, inches away from them. And mm-hmm. and so everyone was like in awe, like they really saw that it was a miracle. And so after that, a doctor went to check them and there was nothing wrong with them. Like they Mm -hmm. didn't even have a cold, like no frostbite, nothing. Mm -hmm. And that um, reminds me of the story on Daniel. Mm -hmm. The lion's den. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Well, actually, well, yeah, the lion's den too. Mm -hmm. And then with uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like that they weren't hurt by the fire and like fire and ice. Mm -hmm. Jesus is with you. Um, And yeah, he Mm -hmm. strengthens you when, when you're in that position. Um, and you're just doing it for his mm-hmm. glory. Exactly. Wow. Yeah, I actually, um, I'm sorry, I'm a movie I'm a movie person instead of a book person, but the movie <laughs> Tortured for Christ is Richard Wormbrand and their story, like Christy was talking about how they stayed yeah. mm-hmm. even though they could have left. And 
Uh, so his story is amazing. And it was cool because going back to what you said in the last podcast of how important scripture is, he rem- he memorized because he knew he was going to be taken. He just knew that. And one of my favorite quotes, um, and Ryan always brings it up to me with Richard and Sabina. He's like, you know that if I do this, I will be um, taken and I won't be able to be with you. And he's, mm-hmm. she said, I did not marry a coward. Mm-hmm. I married... I don't want to oh. butcher that. Basically, I married a man who is going to go out there and, I'm you know, faithfully it. serve the Lord. The so it was just really cool because um, you can watch that Tortured for Christ. But also she has a movie called Sabina mm-hmm. Tortured for Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called The Nazi Year. So that's also good. And that story was on there. So another resource um is the torch lighters those are for children if you want to have your children um we shared that with the yeah the youth (laughs) group and stories about like Corey ten boom and george mueller and all that so that's really good um another resource is i butchered it in the last one i think i said voice of the martyrs.com but it's uh Mm persecuted.com and that's that and there's a podcast on the voice of the martyrs and also the books uh, extreme devotional, you know, Voice of the Martyr, those devotionals of those stories are so inspiring. I love reading them. Um, I heard this one recently from, it was just like another podcast I was listening to. I think it was with Becoming Something, but they're interviewing this guy who was a um, missionary in China, or he knew of this missionary family in China. So they went to go preach the gospel to some like random tribe and place like I didn't realize there's a lot of small places that um, they don't even have like languages for in like Asia and stuff. So basically they went to go preach the good news and the town elder or whatever, he gets saved. And they say like 2000 or though they say uh, this man, Jesus came and died and then was raised, rose again. And you can have eternal life in heaven and paradise if you put your faith in Jesus and believe that. And I'm butchering it. But basically, all of a sudden, this elder was like, oh, my goodness, when did this happen? Two years, like two years ago, a couple weeks ago. And they were like, this happened 2000 years ago. And he's like. Why hasn't anyone told us? Like, wow. why don't we know? Wow. And it's the same thing with us nowadays is like, how will they know unless a preacher is sent? Like mm-hmm. it was Romans ten fifteen. They won't know. Yeah. And there's people in America that don't even know. Mm-hmm. They've never been invited to church. They don't wow. know the true Jesus because first of all, they don't see it in Christians. Mm. Christians are a terrible witness. They say they're a Christian, but they live like the world. And we need to be an example like those women were to John Bunyan, mm. where witnessing is not something... Um, you say and what you say it's who you are and how you live Amen. that's the witness and then um the other story that i love is i love hearing stories of missionaries who have come to our church so al and peg were in their chinese missionaries and they were sharing about when they gave bibles to the chinese um for like the very first time and they're hugging and kissing and just crying over the bible and they're like ripping Mm. off pages and passing it because they didn't have enough bibles like ashley has heard stories they will memorize one page of the bible and get Mm. more out of that and know that this is jesus like he is the word become flesh and that's all they have and yet what we have like five bibles that we throw on the floor and that just collects dust and so for mm. us to know, we don't know how long we're going to have our Bibles. So mm. to study the word, yeah. like um, I didn't bring up that part, but Richard Wimbrand, he studied the verses because he knew he was going to be captured. He studied, there's 365 verses on um, to not fear uh, or something like that, right? I think yeah, not every, fearing. Yeah, every day, yeah. And, and so one times. for every day of the year and he memorized all those verses and he's like, what day is it? And he asked the person who was driving him to basically go to prison And he's like, this day. And then he remembered what verse it was. And Mm. it was exactly what he needed. Mm. And that's what we should be doing is studying the word and remembering scripture. Because when they're in prison, they don't have the Bible. So they're sharing the good news to each other and what they know in verses that they've memorized. Mm. And for us, this life is getting crazy. And this world is getting crazy. We could be shut down tomorrow. My dad can be put in prison for, you know, sharing the truth of God's word and people say that's a hate crime because you're sharing that. So I'm just encouraging you to in your alone time with the Lord, if we can't be a witness now, 
if you haven't watched the podcast last week about being a witness in your hometown, how can we witness when we are facing persecution and pain and having to possibly as a parent, like other stories I've heard, seeing your child tortured in front of you and saying, you need to tell me where the other Christians are or I'm going to kill. And they're literally hanging their child up and beating them like to death. And the child is like, help me, help me. And then all of a sudden you see the switch and this was in the movie, but I've also read stories of the child be like, no, wait, like, don't do it. Don't do it. I see Jesus. I'm going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And they're just crying, but yet dying. And the parent is obviously crying because he's like, I can't help my child. Mm -hmm. And yet the Lord, right? Think of the reward. And he stood up for Stephen. He's standing up for Mm -hmm. those people as well. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. just know that, even if you never get to that point, like where you're tortured for Christ, that it might be your your family hating you and not mm-hmm. wanting you to come to family things because you're going to share the truth with them. And your friends being like, you're not fun anymore. You're not cool. I don't want to be with you. It might be quote unquote little, but to us, that's what we can handle right now. But yeah, yeah we can't even yeah. at times handle that. So all I'm saying is we need to encourage each other with these stories. Yeah. Get a Voice of the Martyr devotional listen to the podcast, read stories of these radical men and women and realize that we're soft. Like we are snowflakes <laughs> compared to these yeah. people. And we need yeah. to strengthen ourselves up with the word of God and also testimonies. Yeah. So yeah. read testimonies, share your testimony. I don't care if it's not as radical as other testimonies. These people didn't think, I don't think they thought, oh, I'm going to have amazing testimony one day. It just happened. So know that you're not trying to just put yourself in those situations, but those situations can come and then stand firm. The only way we can stand firm is if we're armored up with Mm -hmm. armor of God, but also asking the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit fill me because I am weak. I Mm -hmm. can deny you. I, in my own strength, in my flesh, I will deny you, but please strengthen me in this moment to not deny you. And the other missionary that came and shared a story was a Congo Samson and he did deny Christ one time and yet the Lord spared him but then the next time when he was again all the people to the left and right of him were getting their head chopped off and they were denying Christ and he said kill me he's like great you get to I get to see my Jesus right now then he's like you're you're making it easy for me and then they passed him (laughs) and so I mean that's the missionary that's here in Tucson and then he gets sent out but Just be radical now, and you only can do that by your intimacy and alone time with Jesus today. Don't try to throw yourself in another country. Be faithful where you are, like we say, fat. Faithful, available, teachable. So we love you guys. Thank you, ladies, for sharing those stories. Those are amazing. Chris has one more thing, and we'll close up. Yeah, I just want something that, I don't know, it's just, it was on my heart while we were talking, um, just because of the missionary stories, and um, when Christy was sharing about Sabina, I know one of hers was, she actually ended up forgiving the yeah. um, guard that killed her family, um, mm-hmm. and so that also was what brought the guard to Jesus, mm-hmm. and ended up actually helping her when she was, like, trying to share the gospel, and, and um continue that evangelistic work he actually helped her in that and then i also thought of um oh my gosh what's the other one Corey Corey ten Ten boom who forgives the um guard the nazi yeah right the guard or the nazi who ended up killing her sister who was in the concentration camp with her yeah so then that just came to mind of just how powerful um forgiveness is but also how jesus when we call on the name of the lord and we confess and we repent that we are forgiven, you know, Mm. of our sins. And so that just is, I don't know, the Lord laid that on my heart with every story. And it was just that act of forgiveness is what really kind of Mm. grabbed Mm -hmm. the heart of the the Mm non-believer or the person who was doing the persecuting. And so, um, yeah, there Mm. is power in forgiveness and Jesus forgives you. Mm. Um, And so um, when you call on the name of the Lord and and there is that forgiveness. And so, I don't know, the Lord just really put that on my heart. And in all those missionary stories, I just saw like how that is kind of what turned is when that missionary or that person is the one who forgave the offender or the person who actually did the killing. Yeah. Um, So so. it breaks pride. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. While she was saying that, like, three other stories popped in her head. There's so many, and they're yeah. so good, but 
I want you to search them out yourself. Mm. And I also want you to know that, like Carissa said, that there's forgiveness for you today. Mm. No matter what you've done or how bad you are, the Lord can forgive you. Amen. We are imperfect people. We can't forgive, but the Lord mm -hmm. can forgive you and he loves you. So um, I'm just encouraging you right now to run to Jesus, to fall at his feet. And so... We love you guys. Thank you so much. If you would like to reach out to us and you have any questions, you guys can uh, email us. We'll put the email down below. You can also comment down below. You can message us on our social media, which is at Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to this video, and also share this video. Uh, you guys also can listen to us if you are on YouTube to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Just type in Calvary Conversations. And if you are listening, you guys can check out our YouTube, subscribe, and also leave a comment down below on YouTube and the Apple Podcasts, you know, Spotify, Instagram. because give us a five-star review. And I think you can do that every time, but I think I already said Instagram, social media, oh. Instagram, Carissa is taking care of that. So <laughs> make sure to follow us on Instagram <laughs> and please check out our website, which is CalvaryConversations.com. And if you would like to support this podcast, this is a listener supportive. Um, you guys can do that in the description below that says donate. Thank you so much, guys, and God bless.